Well, hello YouTube. So, uh, Wednesday afternoon ride, because Tuesday was a washout. <laughs> and uh, it's definitely coming into late autumn. Um, getting standing at the wet, slimy roads and uh, perfect conditions for a low powered 250 motorcycle. Uh, take him home. He takes no, you know, getting the mud off him is, is, is nothing. Whereas Tet Lake is a major undertaking. And I uh, just thought I'd have a ride around one of my favourite um, rides, which is uh, up these dales. Um, sort of in the direction of Pocklington and maybe back down uh, Millington Dale or Fairy Dale or one of them, we'll see. We've had a um, couple of big storms go through. We've had more than enough rain and we've got two more big storms coming in off the Atlantic as I speak. I think on the west side of the country today it's miserable but we're in a little pocket of calm so I thought I'm gonna get out while I got the chance just get some waterproofs on and I put I put me the gear I put on today is like I don't mind if this gets muddy blathered up you know what I mean it's easy you just, this will all go in the washing machine very easily whereas my touring kit that's a different job I don't need it anyway. It's not. It's not what. It's not. Uh, not that cold. I put uh, an extra vlog up. I don't normally put uh, vlogs up in quick succession like that. But uh, the reason why I put the one up this morning was uh, I wanted it out of the way. Uh, it just tidied everything up nicely. That was the last of a series of six that I did. Uh, one series which was on Tetley. Um, the long and winding road series and the uh, the other one was uh, it was just me running around on this bike and it takes me into uh, an introduction for something I'm going to do uh, about just running and maintaining the bikes which will take me into winter different way go up the Goodmanham road for a change cross over what was the old uh, Beverly to Market Wheaton Railway closed in 1964 just here I think that would have been a tunnel and as you could see from the chap with a rucksack on his back there it's um, it's a part of the Minster Way it's a walk from Beverly Minster to York Minster it's about 50 miles I, I did it Oh, I don't know, 30 years ago when it very first started. This is Goodman and Village with its uh, Norman church. I think it's fair to say now that the majority of the rides I'm going to do will be with the 250s. Put the old lad away to bed. Uh, my plan is if I get a really nice, exceptional weather, he might come out. But other than that, I, I think he can just stay in the shed. This is the outskirts of Market Wheaton. For those who will follow me on a map, I rode up to, uh, from Beverley to uh, the village of Etton via Cherry Burton. So Beverley, Cherry Burton, Etton, went round Etton village and then followed the road that, uh, to Goodmanham. And then from Goodmanham, this is Market Wheaton. None of these roads have numbers, so I can't give you a number. This one probably has but for the life of me, I can't think what it would be. It would be a B road. And it goes from Market Wheaton just up to Lonsborough Roundabout, which is ahead of me. 
and then from Lonsborough I'm going to ride the back roads around to Pocklington and then from there I'm still undecided I was asked if I'd you know um, let people know where I am so they can follow me on a map but it's not always easy it's not so bad on Tetley because I tend to ride air roads but with uh, Woody riding these country lanes um, they're mostly unclassified so all I can do is identify it by villages and as I say at the end of the road here that's uh, Lonsborough roundabout and I think the road we're going to cross is the A614 uh, I think that's an interesting road, it'll take you all the way down to Nottingham if you follow it this is Lonsborough roundabout was I right about the run? Oh yeah I was, I amazed myself, it's day 614 yeah. that way goes to uh, Baton and Middleton on the walls That way we'll take you down to the roundabout and take you to York. And this is the turn off for Lonsborough and Numbernham. So riding up to uh, Lonsborough here, Lonsborough Hall, this is a stately home on my right, Lonsborough Hall. In there. Um, as far as I know, it's still a private residence. Um, this is the road that starts to take us up into the Waldland. As you can see, we're climbing fairly steadily. Everything to our left is the Vale of York. What did he think to my uh, item on the TRK 502 series? Uh, I'm very, very impressed with those bikes. Um, even more so because they're a collaboration between an, an Italian motorcycle maker, Benelli, and uh, a Chinese motorcycle maker. I think it's Jan Long. I think that's what they call them. And they got one hell of a write-up from the motorcycling press. And... Uh, Motorcycle News's version of it was um, they finally come of age. Um, there was only two things on it that I looked at and I thought yeah, they were a bit poor. Uh, some of the sw switches are a bit like Woody's but I've never had any trouble with them so fair go like. And uh, this is that lookout. Not that you'll see anything on this camera. Um, and the other thing was the quality of the hand grips <laughs> they were very poor real plasticky however I can't say that's a really big problem because most people are going to change them uh, like I would do for Oxford or you know uh, heated grips of some kind actually I think I'd probably go for um, these that I've got on here these bike tech ones uh, mainly because they're small, you know, they don't take up a lot of space. And they're very bright to see, very obvious. And I've just had to have a spare kit in my garage. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I think there's more than a strong possibility that I will add one of those. See what I mean about the roads, look? I will add one of those next uh, next summer. All being well. I had I had three that I was looking at, but uh, well, it's two really. Uh, the Benelli Imperial was one of them, and the other. The other two were the same bike, 502 Tourist and the 502X. I can't make my mind up which one I prefer. I think the 502X
the one that has more off-road ability. I, I, the um, 502 Tourist, it's too much like Woody. Whereas the X is the opposite. Woody's, you know, sort of an on all on road bike. Which I don't really need. That would be like having two of the same in the garage. Whereas if I get the X bike, that's um, a proper, off, you know, it's a good adventure bike. I also, I think I prefer the exhaust system on the 502X. I'm not sure about that can stuck underneath the engine. I'm not, it's not a design of exhaust I'm particularly keen on. And I think the first thing I'd do with that 502X is actually take the, the OEM can off and, uh, and get one of these, um, oh, I forget what they call the replacement. They're sold by um, Chinese motorcycle parts. On f I'll, I'll have to look up the name. I can't remember it. It's, it's gone out of my head. Oh, I am so pleased I didn't ring Tetley. <laughs> this would have been breaking my heart. That bike is so hard to keep clean. Tetley, uh, Tetley, uh, sorry, Woody. <laughs> Just give him a shower. It takes about five minutes to wash him. This big, big... Um, bucket of bubbles I tend to wash him off with a detergent first and then I wash him off with car wash, wash and wax second and then get my hair dryer out literally I have a hair dryer which um, which Judy gave me. It's damn useful for driving little motorbikes. <laughs> I don't know about putting Woody in the wash when I get back. I think I might have to put myself in. But it's good fun. It's only mud, isn't it? I don't give a shit about things like, like, like this, mud, this don't bother me, I can't give a toss, it's when it's got salt in it, that's what I don't like it, because it, you just know the damage it does, and you just cannot, it don't matter how much you bloody wash a bike, you can never get it all off, it just gets in and everywhere, and this bike's done with ACF 50 as well, so you know, I, I, I do look after him like that. Blimey, I'd say they've had a flood here. Uh, to Sorry, mate. Yeah, it's certainly flowing. Now then, this is the bit where I always get lost. Hayton, and that goes to... Yeah, that's water again. The number of ways you can get to water. I will have to go up that road one of these days. But not today, because I want to do this one again. I came down here around about maybe a month, six weeks ago. I really enjoyed it, so I'm going to do it again. A few people have said to me about the buying a 500cc bike, but it seems natural to me because uh, I don't, I don't have a, I'll have a 250 a 500 and a 750 and as I, as I said to Calm Biker well you've got, you, you, you've got to get the litre bike haven't you <laughs> don't tell Judy <laughs> I've no plans to part with these the, the two I've got none whatsoever um, nah, I'm just not doing it that's the end of it And as to, because uh, Cam Biker said to me, well, will you ride them all? Yeah. Yeah, I'll definitely ride them all. Um, I'll put the two Chinese bikes together. 
on one insurance policy and I'll stick tightly on it if I can do it. I'm looking into multi-bike policies at the moment. What I'm not going to do with the 502 is I'm not going to buy any of those big metal boxes that they're advertising or um, the only thing I want I'm not, I'm not sure if it, it isn't on when you buy it the only thing I want is the the rack that goes on the back but the reason I want the rack is because um, my soft bags will then fit it they won't go into the wheels that's the only reason uh, and I know you can buy the luggage rack separate to the box I don't want those metal boxes I think they look ugly um, I'm gonna uh, just use soft bags and I've got enough top cases I don't need to be buying another top case you might notice this um, I've got uh, a top case on Woody. Uh, the reason is I went shopping on him this morning and uh, I needed it. I've always had the top plate on. Um, and I was buggering about yesterday trying to fit my top box back on. It, it didn't seem right somehow. Then when I looked at it I realised I had the flipping uh, the luggage plate on that fits me... Um, my box that's on Tetley, I had the wrong, so I had to swap it around. Anyway, it wasn't a bad thing because I put a brand new plate on. And I thought with winter coming on, I might get caught in the rain. The one thing I haven't got for my little bag is a waterproof cover. So my little bag that I bought that normally goes on the rack is actually in the bottom of the top case, along with leggings and all sorts of other bits and pieces for, for the winter. I don't want to spoil it, getting it wet, it's, it's stupid. I can't understand why they don't sell it with a top cover. That's the Hulte York railway line again, the bit from Market Wheaton going towards York. It's the most intact piece of the track. So, you can see now, look, why I didn't want to bring Tetley out. But I say on this bike, you're getting blathered like this, it eats nothing. And the other reason why I put the top case back on, this is the bag that normally goes on the back, the auto kicker. But uh, I need it for filming. This has got all film gear in. Um, and at this time of year, it's invaluable because, as you can see, you just don't know what it's going to do. So this is where. Woody comes into his own, definitely comes into his own. I just stopped to change a battery. I had an idea it was going to run out, so I did a great big long piece to camera. Just stopped opposite the old, but that's Pocklet and Ambulance Station over there. One of my old workplaces. Right, let's just see how I'm doing for petrol. Should be alright, because I only filled him up the other day. Yeah, he's used a bit, but he's all right, yeah. Top him off before I take him on. Uh, yeah, so, you can see, yeah, he's, he's, he's quite muddy. But that's what I bought him for. That was the whole point of buying him when I got him. It means like my best bike, with, with 750, it, 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 you know, it's even, even my clothing is muddy. Just save me best gear for nice sunny days.